Welcome to Development Devil, the show where I go behind the scenes to take a look at the story about how certain games came into existence. Today we'll be looking at the 8 year long journey of Cube World, with its humble beginnings as a promising game to the disappointment of today. Wolfram von Funk is a German programmer and founder of Picroma, who certainly takes his time with his work. Wolfram, or Wolle as he was called online, created a YouTube channel on June 8th, posting his first video announcing the voxel-based game Cube World in 2011, with multiple videos coming later showcasing the development process. Within just a few weeks he had created a multiplayer world, sprites and enemies. This got people fairly excited. After keeping his Twitter and blog updated throughout the year, Mo Yang of all companies picked him up, stating, Our current plan is to plug his brain directly to a keyboard and sell whatever comes out. It was around this time that Wooley's wife Sarah joined the team to help develop Cube World. She mainly worked on sprites and other small things, whilst Wooley handled most of the base programming and larger parts of the machine. It seemed all was well, and Cube World was beginning to amass a small fan base as more videos came out. Then, in July of 2013, out of nowhere an alpha for the game was released. And I just wanted to mention that in a video by GameSpot playing through the alpha, this line was dropped. I only have a level 4 here and I apologize for that, I've been spoiled by CloudSafe. Oh, how far we've fallen. The game presented in the 2013 alpha was agreed by most to be a good time. The games had a unique visual style and the combat was satisfying. The game had enough content to last quite a while and the map was completely infinite, split into different sectors and biomes. While there weren't really any goals, the game was able to justify itself with fun multiplayer and many places to explore and items to collect. Sadly, the site used to host the game's alpha was DDoS attacked almost immediately after release, leading to its shutdown later on. After their first taste of Cube World, people wanted more, so Woolley got hard to work. Every once in a while he would update his Twitter and blog, talking about adding and removing features in the game. At multiple points throughout Cube World's development, however, there would be month-long, at one point even a year-long break, when no updates on the game would be given. This style of game development is something I like to call spurt development. Wille didn't have a Patreon or anywhere to receive donations set up, so it's likely he and his wife still had to go to their jobs to fund the project. This would mean they would have less time to work on games, so development stopped and started throughout the years. Nevertheless, even in 2017, the game was still receiving consistent updates on its Twitter page, letting people know it was coming. Just at a very slow pace. This would all change in July of 2017, almost four years after the alpha released. One more post by Woolley was made, and that was it. Radio silence. Of course, this isn't the end of the story. It would never be this simple. For almost two years the game sat there, seemingly abandoned, with absolutely no support being talked about. The fanbase fell into despair, thinking Wolfram had given up on them. Then, in January of 2019, Wule would post a tweet saying, New Cube World screenshots incoming. It was alive. While some people in the community were skeptical that this return would last for more than a few months, the general thought was that Cube World was back. After posting a couple more images later in the year, a new video would be posted to the Cube World YouTube channel. The video was titled Cube World New Title Screen, and this was the final push the game needed to get the fans back. There was a certain feeling of finality around the game at this point, like the story was coming to a close. And soon enough, on September 7th, the game was announced to be releasing on Steam by the end of the year. In a show of good faith, every person who bought the original alpha would even get a free Steam key. By now, Mo Yang was long out of the picture, so publishing the game was done independently by Wule. And oh boy. Did cube board release. But uh, let's take a step back a bit, because this is only the surface of what was going on with cube world's strange development. It's hard to explain what happened without using words that have already been said, so I'll let Wooley himself tell you. Dear Cube World community, I think this is the right place for this. This is where it all started, where my little passion project came to life and became something much bigger. Here is my explanation of why everything took me so long. 
why there were no updates. When I released Cubeboard back in 2013 on our homepage, I was enthusiastic to finally share my game with you. It was a dream come true for me, and I've always wanted to be a game developer since I was a kid. As some of you might remember, we got DDoS as soon as we opened the shop. It might sound silly, but this event traumatised me and kind of broke something inside of me. I never told anyone about it, and I don't want to go into the details, but I'm dealing with anxiety and depression ever since. Social media didn't improve it as you might imagine. Still not sure if it's a good idea to tell the world about it, but I've wanted to give the fans an explanation. There were several points in the past years where I've considered releasing an update, but every time I was afraid it wasn't good enough. I'm also a bit of a perfectionist, and it made me rework everything from scratch several times. The version I'm planning to release is basically Cube World 2.0. There are still many things I'd like to add in the future, but I think the version is already fun. I hope some of you will enjoy the upcoming release. I'm currently working on the new homepage, and I still want to add some more related things to the game before the release. The events from Wooley's past and his worries about the future had led to delays and revisions and stopped him from posting new content for years. Along with this, he also had his personal life with his wife and recently born son, which anyone with a child would know makes hobbies very hard. The line, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, however, may have misled people, making them think that the content changes to the game would be good. And, for the most part, they weren't. I, I'm gonna be honest, I, I prefer the old version with the XP and the leveling and the talent system and so, but I've just waited so long, I don't give a shit, dude. I'm just, I'm playing it a lot <laughs> where, now. Just, where are the quests? Yeah. Where are the grand cities? Yeah. Are you disappointed? <laughs> I mean, it's just that. weird. How do you work on a game for six years, post and tease all this new content that doesn't make it to the final version in the last year of development, completely scrap everything, and then mm -hmm. just fuck your game up and make <laughs> everything that was fun about the game completely fucking wrong? Cube World released in 2019, a long eight years after development had started, to sighs of disappointment and anger. So many features that Woolay had teased so long ago weren't in the game at all, cut content everywhere, and probably one of the biggest issues with the game was the progression. You could spend 10 or more hours in one sector of the game grinding for gear, but as soon as you left that area all of the equipment you would have would decrease its stats to being completely worthless unless you were in that specific zone of the game. It was generally agreed that the alpha shown in 2013 and what was released in 2019 were different entities now and for the most part, people liked the earlier build better. One of the most anticipated features, questing, was also ripped out of the game, seemingly erased from existence. It didn't help Wooly's case either that as soon as the game released, he disappeared off of all social media platforms. To many, it seemed that Wolfram had taken the money and ran. Even when free Steam keys were given to owners of the alpha, that didn't change people's minds, as they had an expiry date. With CubeWorld's code redemption site being shut down and with no way to contact Woolay after the expiry date, if you were too late, you were out of luck and had to buy the game again. This led Woolay's reputation into the gutter, and it seems like it might be a while until he crawls back into the internet. To put it simply, Cube World is still not finished. Many promised features are missing from the game, and it's a hollow shell of its former self. There are still people in the fanbase keeping it alive with mods that aim to add all the missing content to the game, and the subreddit and Discord is still semi-active. Speaking of the Discord, after a short look around I find the channel that tracks Woolly. Not stalking, but more so just trying to find out if he's still working on the game. As of this date, there have been four posts post-launch, with one being an email between a fan and Woolay confirming that he's working on fixing progression and implementing things promised originally. Whether Cube World will ever redeem itself is up in the air, but my personal opinion is that with enough effort, the game could pull a No Man's Sky, just in a little bit more time. As for if the community will ever return to full force, I highly doubt it. Visiting the Reddit, most comments push the narrative of Woolay pushing out a half-baked game with no thought about the fans. 2019 divided keyboard fans in a way that might not be fixable, which might just be for the best. And that was the story of Cube World, from an early internet sensation in 2013 to the ruined mess of 2019. 
Wule may never be able to make amends for all of his mistakes, but only time will tell what comes next. In the meantime, while you wait for the next Cube World update, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content, and drop a like if you want to see more of it. I really enjoy making this series, so if you want to see more or have a certain game you'd like to recommend we feature, feel free to leave a comment down below. My name is Sky, and until next time, may all your games be good ones.